Okay, I guess they're not gonna make any announcements out there that I know of. Nobody's told me anything, so. Um, just a couple reminders for here. Uh, one, I'm sure they'd be happy uh, for me to tell you to come to the big party on Thursday. I'll be there, so come hang out on Thursday. It's a lot of fun. I go every year. It's a good time. Um, so be sure to check that out, buy some tickets if you haven't done so already. Maybe I'll see you there. In terms of this class, now they're probably doing announcements, whatever. Uh, in terms of this class, um, next week we have an open day, so it's sort of a catch-up day because microblog is hard. Microblog is a tough assignment. In fact, uh, that's the only thing that's really on my agenda today is to talk about microblog. So I want to spend some time uh, talking about the design of this assignment. So last week we spent a lot of time talking about how do we design our classes? How do we decide what goes into a class, right? Um, I want to run through that same process with microblog, both parts, part one and part two. Uh, some of you may have already finished this assignment. If so, awesome. I still think this is going to be a good practice for you because seeing how other people approach these kinds of problems is a good exercise. Uh, if you're stuck, if you're struggling, I hope this will help get you a little bit unstuck, give you a big push in the right direction. Uh, I'm not going to give you a lot of code, but I will give you some conceptual help with this assignment. I also want to stress before we before we get into this that uh, we're going to do this exercise as a group. We're going to come up with some ideas, a design, but it's it's not the only design. It's not the only way to do this, right? It's not the definitive way to complete this assignment. There is no one way to complete this assignment. So if you've finished this assignment or maybe you've started this assignment, and you've done something that's different, maybe a little bit different, maybe a lot different, I don't know, than what we talk about today, that's all right. That's totally fine. That's sort of the nature of designing programs. Uh, you give two people the same problem, it's not gonna turn out the same way. So that's okay. That's totally fine. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing we should do is take a look at what's been asked of us. Take a look at, at the expectations. So. We can take a look at the first part, part number one, um, and it, it tells you a little bit about what, what this application should do. Uh, we want to have a, uh, a blogging app where users can make posts to a social media site. Um, and for this first part, we're just really worried about two, two main parts, the user and the posts. And so they, they come down here and then they explain a little bit about those two things, the users and the posts. Um, so first question, I've already talked about this question with a couple people, but it's it's the most important one. Uh, what are my classes? What classes do I need to make here? It's not always straightforward. How do you know, right? How do you know what the classes should be that, that you should make to solve this problem? I think one way to think about that, if you're reading a description like this, if you're reading some information about your application, Look for words that repeat themselves. Look for words that show up multiple times. Um, you see the word post, right? Shows up a whole bunch. And the same thing for user. User shows up a whole lot. Or person, I guess. Which person, user, you know, um, same thing um, for, our, for our purposes. So right away, those two concepts, this concept of a user and this concept of a post, those jump out at me as the classes that I want to make. Those are, those are the classes that I want to make. And so then we can go through the design process just like we did last week. What, what are the two things that a class contains? Two general categories, things? Variables, methods, right? So what's the relationship that we're looking for for variables? Between a variable and its class, there's a relationship between those two things? Has, we use that has a relationship, good. This doesn't quite use that relationship explicitly. It doesn't say has a, but this, there's have right there, right? Just have, which is close. And sometimes, you know, as a programmer, you sort of have to read between the lines a little bit and think about things in um, more technical terms. Um, but we have enough information here to get started. We have enough information here to start designing these classes. So let's, the post classes first. So let's start with the post class. I'm going to go to IntelliJ. I'm not going to write a whole lot of code, but I will uh, sort of sketch out the design of these 
um, classes for you, or we will together actually. What did I say? Post first. Okay. So we want to come up with the variable. I, I like to start with the variables. That they're usually easier for me to figure out. But um, you know, if you'd rather start with the other stuff, that's that's totally fine. Um, so has us post has a, and then just look at your look at your requirements. They actually kind of spell it out here. Post has a user who posted it, right? Um, so that's going to make the list. Has a user who posted it. Next one was a um, something to represent the order in which it was posted. So some kind of a number, some kind of a post number, or you might call it an ID, call it whatever you want, right? Some kind of number. Maybe you want to add some notes here. Represents order. The contents of the post. Post has contents, so we'll say contents. And then last, certainly not least, optionally a web address to a site. Okay, so web address. So based on the requirements, I managed to pull out at least four, at least four variables that this class needs to have. There may be more. This is one of the trickier parts of designing your code of coming up with these classes is sometimes it's very obvious what kind of variables you're going to need to get the job done. Other times there might be some more hidden kinds of variables in there. I know I need at least these four. I feel comfortable with these four. It's possible that as I go along, I'll have to add more to this list. And that's OK. Design is very, um, designs should be flexible. They should be able to be modified. Um, so. You know, start with what you know. Don't worry about what you don't know. When you come across a need for something, you can add it. You can add it to your list. So the next thing that I like to do with my has is, anybody have an idea what we should maybe decide on next with these variables? The types, right? The types. So if we start up here at the top, the user who posted this post, what should the type of that be? String. String. I don't agree. Yeah. I don't agree. What'd you say? User. A user. A user. We haven't quite got that far yet, but we did just talk about how I'm also going to create a user class, right? So let's use that class. Let's use that user class here. Why is that better than a string? Why is using my user class here better than a string? I guess if the user doesn't have a name that's necessarily a string, but maybe it has some other types in it, or is it just a different type all the way? Or? Um, so we haven't talked. I, I like I like where you're going. We haven't talked about the the name yet, but it probably is a string, right? Names are usually strings. Um, but is that all that a user has? Oh, the user's got everything, right? It's not just a name. It's an address. We haven't gotten that far yet. It's on the requirements list, though, right? It's an address. It's an email address. It's a whole bunch of information. If I just use a string here. I can access the user's username, but that's it. That's all. I can't get access to that other information if I need it, if I want it. So this is a more complete representation of, of what we mean by a user, this class. Are there any questions about that? That's a really, really important concept. Very important. Yes? Um, I, what's an object? What's an object? Is user an object? Uh, yes. Okay. Anything, well, so here's the, the typical answer that you get um, when working with Java. Everything is an object. Okay. Everything is an object. But a more complete answer to that would be anything that's defined by a class is an object. So post, we're creating post. Post is now going to be an object because we've created a class for it. Okay. We're about to create a class for users, so after we create that user class, we'll be able to make user objects and use those in our code. So are the variables objects too, or is it just like a class of the object name? So a variable is really, uh, a variable is really just kind of a label. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, if I look around the room, I see lots of objects. I can, if I had a label maker, I could print out labels and slap them on various objects and give them names, right? Mm -hmm. So the variable is really just a label. Oftentimes, it will point to an object, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. um, great questions. Any other questions? OK. Uh, the next one, I think they kind of gave this to you in the requirements. The order would be an int, probably. I think they told you that. Um, contents, what should the type be for contents? String, yeah. And then for a web address, or I don't like having two, well, two words is fine, I guess, for name, but URL is a little bit more concise. What should the type for this be? String. There we go. There we go. So we've decided on the types, and we've decided on the names for all the variables for the post class. Again, this may not be everything. We may get going and decide ah, we need some other stuff. But this is a start, anyway. We know we're going to need this stuff based on the requirements. OK? That's the first part. The second part of the class is the behaviors, or I might say the can-dos. What can a class do? What can this thing do? Remember, those become methods in our classes. So there's one that we almost always need 99.9% .9 of the time, very special method. Constructor. So we need a constructor. I oftentimes don't even bother to write this down because it's just kind of automatic. I know I need one. So I often won't bother to write it down, but we'll go ahead and write it down just so we know. Just so we remember that we need this. What's the role of the constructor? It's got one job. Initialize, Initialize the variables. Make sure that all of these variables have some kind of a value by the time it's finished. Okay? You have to make sure that value is there. Okay? So we need the constructor. What are some other behaviors that we might need for this? We can take a look at the requirements to see if it gives us any hints right, about this. Might have to go to the next part, too, and look ahead a little bit and see. It says, uh, you know, we need to create a main class that constructs some things with test data. Actually, for part one, it doesn't even really suggest that you need to create many methods. This part down here, it says you don't really need to interact with them until part two. So honestly, for part one, you could probably get away with just a constructor. If all you wanted to do is finish part one, a constructor is probably enough. Um, but if we look ahead to, yeah, question. Well, if, if you set like your uh, variables to private, so you're only going to get because it mm -hmm. wants you to print it. Okay, so it does want us to be able to print it. You're right. It does. I I did skip over that piece of it. Um, where does it say that, actually? I know it says that somewhere. It might be on part two. I don't remember. But um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. If we do want to print these out, how might we go about that? There's actually a very special method that can be used for this purpose. I think we've talked about it, although it might have been a couple weeks ago. I can't actually remember. There's a special method for that purpose. I hope we've talked about it. If not, now is a great time. Two string? Have we seen this before? No? OK, that's fine. Now is a great time to talk about it. Let's go back uh, and t take a look at something from last week, then, as an example. Uh, let's go to our student. This is, a, this is one that we worked on last week, right? Two string is a very special method. It, I mean, the name actually tells you what you need to know about it. It takes an object and converts it into a string. This is useful for us because as humans, we like to read things as, as text. We understand things better that way. But objects aren't always text. Sometimes there's numbers, sometimes there's other stuff. right? So toString is a special method. It always looks like this, public string as the return type, toString. This is always what this method is going to look like. It is a little bit mad at me right now. Uh, well, is it? 
No, it's not. It's fine. It's mad because I haven't actually done anything yet. We haven't actually told it what to do yet. A lot of times, these methods will just have simple one-line statements. And your, your goal here is to decide, all right, what information in this class is important enough to display to somebody? It's important enough to show to somebody if they want to print it out. So we're looking at students right now. Probably wanted to print out their name, their ID number. I don't need this static variable, I don't think. You could include it if you wanted to. I personally don't think it's necessary. Uh, credits and GPA you could include if you wanted to. Right? It's, it's really sort of a judgment call on your part as the designer of this program. What is the, you know, what does somebody really want to look at if they print out this object? But I definitely want the name and the ID number. So I'll say this.name. I'll put a space in between and say this.id number for the student. And if you wanted to keep going and put the credits and the GPA on here as well, you could do that, right? But this should be enough for us to at least, you know, tell two students apart if we wanted to. So how does this help us? If I go up to my main, whoops, sorry, what did I click on? If I go up to my main method here and I say system.out.printme, I know it's been a while since we looked at this code, so let's let's back up a second. Me is a student object that we created. That's my name. I think that's the credits and the GPA, right? So when I run this code, what I hope to see, if I ran the right thing, I might not have run the right program. I'm sorry. Let me try that again. So that is the result of this line. And then we have the class standing. It says freshman. But then here, this is the result of two string. The name. If I don't have a two string, let me take this out for a second and show you what would happen if you don't do this. And run it again. I get this instead. We've actually seen something like that before. Anybody know what that is? It's the memory location. Yeah, it's the memory location of that particular student object. We saw this when we tried to print arrays. If you try to print out an array, it looks something like this. You can't do that. You have to go through and print out each element of the array. Two string method lets you print out objects. If I create this two string method, you print out the object. Another way to do this is actually like uh, Andrea suggested, you can create getters. That's totally fine too. If you want to create getters and print stuff out that way, that's okay. But this is a little bit more straightforward. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you noticed that. We didn't actually call this method. We didn't actually call the two string method. It's automatic. If you try to print an object, what it does, what the computer tries to do, it says, do you have a two-string method? Oh, you do. Okay. I'm going to use that as a text representation of this object. If you don't have a two-string method, it's like, well, okay. You don't have a two-string. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to give you this memory address. That's the best I can do. You haven't told me what you want this to look like. Um, so I... I uh, I wish I would have introduced this to you last week or the week before. It's actually pretty convenient to create these. In fact, one of the, the always create a constructor. I almost always create a two string right after that. Almost always. It makes testing so much easier. Any questions? So that's something that you could then, getting back to what we were talking about with the uh, post. That's something you could also consider including as a behavior for part one. A way to display the post. So what variables would you include? You know, you'd probably include the name of the user that posted it maybe, or and then the post number. 
contents in the URL, and, you know, maybe all of them, or maybe you, you don't think they're all necessary. Again, it's sort of a judgment call on your part. The other things that you might include here would be getters and setters, although a lot of times, I, I, um, I was talking to some people about this, I won't include getters and setters. I'll just keep writing my program until I discover a need for the getters and setters, and then I'll put them in. Um, I don't just automatically add them right away. I wait until I see a need for them, oftentimes. Okay, let's do the same thing for our user class, and then we'll take a look at part two of this assignment as well. User. We're going to do the same thing. The hazas come first, and we're going to take a look at our requirements. Our requirements tell us a lot of what they uh, a lot of what's expected. So a web address, a URL to uh, their avatar picture. All right, so avatar URL or something like that. Uh, the second one was the username, okay. The next one was uh, the first name and the last name. Here's a question, should this be all one or should it be two separate? One for the first name, one for the last name. Does it matter? I think for this assignment, you could argue that it doesn't really matter. And I would agree with you. But in the in the real world, it might it might matter uh, to know which might be better. Ask yourself: Am I ever going to want just the last name or just the first name of that person? If so, I should probably keep them separate, right? If I never see a situation where I'm just going to need the first name or the last name, then keep them together. That's totally fine. Um, for the purposes of, the, of this assignment, I'm not sure that it matters. So we'll just say name and then email address. Email. Again, there might be other things that we need here might be other values that we need here, but based on the information that we have right now, this is, this is a good list. This is a good starting point. Let's talk about the types. What should the types be? I think they're all the same, actually. They're all strings, right? They're all strings. I, I don't see any reason not to. Oops. So let's go ahead and mark that. Okay, and then there's the can do, which again, you definitely need a constructor. And then if you want to, though not strictly required for the assignment, the two string will make your life a lot easier. So for part one, if you took these two templates and you filled them out and you made them work and you tested it, that's it, you get there. That's all you need. For part one, this would work, these two pieces. Um, but there's a second part, so I want to talk about that next. Before I do, though, any questions? Any questions on what we've done so far? I can tell you almost certainly that these are going to change based on what we see in part two. Part two is going to add some stuff, and we're going to have to adapt our design to accommodate those changes that are, that are asked of us. So let's go ahead and take a look at part two next. Um, all right. This is all a review, I think, of part one stuff. This looks almost exactly the same. Um, down here is where we get to the new stuff. We want to create a menu system. It shows us five options. It shows us five options for our menu. And then below here, it explains a little bit more uh, in detail about what should happen for some of these options. But actually, I want to, I want to take a look at the menu itself first. How are these things going to necessarily get incorporated into our program design? Somebody? I'm sorry? Methods. methods. Yeah, they're methods. Methods in maybe the classes that we created, or do we need any new classes here? Do you see any words that are popping up all over the place? One in particular. 
rhymes with the uh, venue. Menu. Yeah. Yeah, we need a menu class. We probably need a menu class. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and create that. They do not give us a list. The first assignment gave us a very handy list of things that were expected to be contained, right? This assignment does not. So part two actually requires us uh, a bit more of reading between the lines, of interpreting what's given to you and translating that into code than what the first assignment did. But let's, let's go through it together. Let's see if we can start to decipher some of that stuff. Um, if we take a look at this first menu option, right? Create a new user. What is that actually telling me to do? How, how am I going to accomplish that if somebody requests that option? How do I accomplish that? Which class do I expect? It's a user class. Specifically, I expect to create a user object. I expect to call the user constructor, right? So for option one, what do I need to do? I need to collect the information that's necessary to create a user object and then call the user constructor. We've already talked about the constructor for the user class. That's already on our list. So we really don't need to add anything else to accomplish that. We just need to ask for the information and create it. Okay, let's take a look at option number two. Become an existing user. All right, so you'll notice that become an existing user, it tells us down here at the bottom, you are currently user and then the name of the person who's logged in, right? So that indicates that we can change who we are in the system. We can change who's currently logged in. How does that affect our code? How can we use code to represent that? This is the tricky part. I think it's going to lead us to a has a. It's going to lead us to a variable relationship, but what relationship? In which class? We have a user who's logged in. And we want to remember that. We want to remember who that person is. Where should we remember that user who's logged in? So we've got three options, user class, host class, or we now have a menu class. So which of those three is going to remember who's currently logged in? The menu. The menu is going to remember who's currently logged in. It might be a little bit of a struggle to understand why that's the case, but um, you can think about it in terms of the other two, right? A user only knows about itself, actually. A user object isn't even going to know how many other users there are in the system. So why would it care who's logged in right now? It's not going to have any idea about, about any of that stuff. And a post really doesn't have much to do with users at all. So the menu, I think, is what makes the most sense. And that's our first has a. Has a logged in user, right? I'm going to remember who's logged in. I want to know who's logged in. I need to remember that. OK? So if we go to the next menu option, we need a way to create a post as the current user. So whoever's currently logged in, we need a way to create the post. So what is that going to entail? Do I have everything that I need to pull this off already? Or am I going to have to add some things to my design to make this work? Can I create a post? Is that something that we have the ability to do based on our current design? I think so, in the post class, right? In the post class, yeah, we have a constructor, which is good for making posts. Right? That's good for making posts. So we can create posts. Where does the post go after we create it? Where am I remembering these posts? Where am I saving these posts? Am I doing that anywhere right now? In the main, in the menu, in the menu class? In the user class? 
I think there are pros and cons that you could argue for for both options, right? The problem though, I think, let's, let's make sure we all understand the problem first. I can create a post, but I'm not remembering that post. I'm not putting that post anywhere. I create the post and then it kind of just goes poof and disappears because I have not decided where that post lives after the fact. I can never get it back. It just disappears. I have nowhere that's actually keeping track of posts right now. So the question then is, all right, where should that be? Where should I put these posts so that I can remember what they are and look at them later? Because that's something I think that the menu is going to ask us to do in the future. So the two options that we have are in the menu class, we can keep track of all of the posts across the whole system. Or the other option that was given was the user class. If we do things in the user class, then I'm only keeping track of the posts probably for that particular user, right? For that one person. I, I would lean towards doing things that way. I think it uh, relates to one of the um, um, one of the topics that you were expected to look at in the prep work today, that uh, separation of concerns, that um, single responsibility principle, right? Keeping things separated out. The menu doesn't care about the posts. The menu has no direct access to the posts. The menu is managing the users, really. The users can manage their own posts. At least that's what I expect when I'm running a blog. I don't expect anybody to go, go through and mess with all of the posts on a blog. I expect them to be able to to be able to manipulate their own stuff, but not anybody else's. So everything's compartmented by the user. So that's gonna change our design. I now have, I now need to have something in my user class that's going to keep track of the posts that I've made. So we have a new Haza, posts. What should the type of this be? An array. An array, array of what? An array of posts, an array of post objects. So the way I would write that, post and then brackets, oops. An array of posts. An array of posts. Or they also alluded to array lists in the prep work a couple of times. I also would have accepted an array list there. I think for the assignment, either one is fine. Whichever one you feel most comfortable with is fine. It's totally OK. An array list or an array will get the job done. We actually did something very similar to this in the exercise last week with the students and courses. So if that's something that still feels a little confusing to you, please go back and take a look at that particular exercise. Yeah. So is this this is just gonna keep this array of posts is only keeping a, a record of that particular user's post. That's correct. That's yes, that's correct. Okay. So we're that's not grouping all the posts together. We're grouping all the posts. That's right. By one person. Yeah, that's right. The the alternative. So we did briefly discuss the alternative, which would be keeping all of the posts together. Mm -hmm. And that would probably be in the menu class. I I think though that most people wouldn't think of a blog as being set up that way necessarily. That kind of to me lends the impression that. I, as a user, can go manipulate whatever post that I want, even if it's mine or not. And that's usually not true, right? That's not how these things typically work. Um, so I think that's really what speaks to keeping it inside of the user class. With, with most things in design, though, uh, the, the most important thing is to be able to defend your design decisions. If you do something a particular way, um, I won't argue with you if you can tell me why. If you can tell me why you did it. Don't just tell me because uh, that sort of felt like what needed to happen. That's not a good reason. If you can give me a reason as to why you did things in a certain way, why you put that there, I will happily accept variations. Um, How would you do it differently if it were an array list as opposed to an array? It would look very similar. So if I, uh, the type would be different, right? This would now be an array list okay. of posts. Okay. The type is different. That means that we treat this a little bit differently. Um, the prep work shows that you don't use square brackets with array lists, right? You use the get method, things like that. 
Um, I actually think that while we're not as familiar with array lists because they're relatively new, if you take the time to learn how to use array lists, they're actually probably going to be easier in the long run. Um, so it's just sort of a matter of whether you have the ability to invest a little bit of time to learn how to use them properly. It will make things easier in the long run. But if, if you are comfortable with arrays, you want to use arrays, I certainly won't stop you from doing that on this assignment. Okay, so I know we've been on this for a minute, but let's just recap here. I want a way to create a post so I can create the post. I have a place to put that post now, now right? That array or that array list. Do I have a way of actually getting it there though? You see what I'm getting at? I feel like that's an additional step. I have the post, I have the array where I want to put the post, but now I actually need to, the post is in the menu class. I'm creating the post here in the menu. I want to put the post in the proper user object. So I need to have a way of passing that information. We need a, not a getter and setter, but it's very similar. It's, it's an addition, right? Yeah, it's an addition. It's a new behavior. It's not quite a, a setter, but it is a behavior. So we need a way to add a post. We need a way to add a post. Again, this actually mirrors one of the things that we did uh, last week. If you look at course, right? Register student, okay, called it something a little bit different, but this is a very similar idea in practice to what we're talking about now. So be sure to go back and review that if you um, need some help with this part. Uh, where was I? I was in the user. So I need a way of adding a post. And one thing that I haven't been doing but might be a good thing to do with behaviors is decide, okay, what should my inputs be? What should the types be? What should the return types be, right? So the inputs here probably gonna be what? I'm adding a post, so I need to know what post I'm adding. So it's probably going to be a post. And then as far as the return type goes, any ideas? Void, I think, is totally fine. There aren't many options, uh, I don't think. I mean, I think void is fine. You could maybe make an argument for a Boolean if you wanted to, but I think that's probably a little overkill. I think void is fine. I think void is okay. All right. Any questions? That was a lot. That was actually, we just did one one menu item there, but it involved us changing our design in a pretty significant way. We had to add this new variable, we had to add a new behavior. Are there any questions about what we did or why we did those things? They're actually important. They're all necessary. Okay. Can I ask, if you look at the register student, why are you doing that message of take down the seat number? Uh, well, we also put it in the array. Okay. We put it in the, and which is more important, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this idea of a seat number actually doesn't really apply to users and posts, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure that concept translates as well. Um, but the act of putting it into the array certainly does. Mm -hmm. And that's something where I think an array list might help out as well. Um, make that one a little bit more straightforward. But you can certainly do it with an array if you want to. Um, okay. Were there any other questions before we move on to the next one? Okay. These last two I don't think are actually all that bad. Print all posts. Print all posts. I want a way of printing all the posts. So if I want to do that, how does that 
How does that look right now? How do I access the post? We just talked about this. Access it by the user. Do I have a way of accessing all the users? Do I have a way of seeing all the users in the system? Not right now, I don't. But if we take a look at the requirements listed here, it says you'll need to keep a list of users in an array. What kind of relationship is that describing? A list of users in an array. You need to keep that in... Which class? Menu. The menu class. So I have a logged in user who's currently logged in right now, but I also have a list of all of the users, right? All of them. Which it's suggested as an array. What kind of array? It could be an array list, sure, or an array, but what, what type? User, yes, good. User. I think it's important to, to have the user class here, not a string. Not a string. Another reason why uh, strings wouldn't be as, as useful here, consider if I just had strings, if I just had the usernames, could I add a post? Could I pick a user out of that list and then add a new post? Is that user? Do strings have the ability to accept posts? They don't. Users do. Right? Users. That's why it's important to use the more complex data type. Because we get that functionality um, as well. All right, and this one is also a user object. Okay? So if I want to print out all the posts, what am I what do I need to do then? I need to go through my list of users. They have their posts. Right? How am I going to access those posts? In the user. This is where we'll use one of those simple methods. You got ends in et. You got one of two choices, right? Yeah. A getter, right? So, okay, we need a getter. Get posts. Getters almost never have inputs. But they are going to have a return type. What should the return type of this be? String? Oh. Careful. Yeah. An array of posts. Our posts are contained in an array. So the, the return type is always going to match the type of the variable that you're returning for a getter. Here I'm returning the posts, so I'll return the array of posts. Or if you use an array list, you would do an array list there instead. That would work as well. Are we okay on that? Yes? Why are we saving all the users in the menu? And why not in the user? Does a user need to know about other users in the system? What does one user object represent? It represents one person, right? It represents me, right? I log into the system and the user object represents me. If we put a list of users in here, this object now no longer represents me, it represents everyone. So we've broken that single responsibility principle. It's now not just responsible for one entity, it's responsible for all of them. And then consider that if we had a list of users here, Consider what would happen then if we added a user. I would have to go to every single user and add the new user to that list in every single user object that we have in order to keep things up to date. Does that make sense? Does that make sense why, why that would be the case? Um, it can be sometimes tricky to, to rationalize those things, which is why I like to do actually what I just did is, all right, Let's just think about what the implications of that choice would be. Let's think about how these things would work if I did things that way. What's going to happen if I change things? What's going to happen if I try to use that later? Um, okay. 
Uh, and then print all users. We just added the array list of users or the array of users, whichever you prefer here. So if I want to print out all the users, I can just go through that array and print them out. We're almost done here, really. There's not much else that needs to happen. Uh, one glaring thing that we're missing, right? I don't have any behaviors here for the menu. I don't have any behaviors. So the question is, all right, what should the behaviors be? And this is where reading the description in a little bit more detail might help. What does the menu do? So I have to display this stuff, right? I have to display the menu. I have to show the menu to the user. What's the other thing that a menu does? It interacts. It interacts. So it processes the user's reply, right? It gets the user's input and then reacts to that. It's a good way of putting it. So some people, I think, would do that all in one. OK, sure, if you want to. We definitely need a constructor. I like to break it up. Display, display menu, that just prints out all the options. That's actually very straightforward. There's not really a whole lot going on there. Just print out all the options and then, you know, um, react to user. So that could get the user input and then, uh, and then um, decide what to do based on that input. If you didn't break those into two pieces, that's totally okay. Actually, some people might break this down even farther. Some people might make a behavior for every single menu option. Okay, you picked option number one. I'm gonna call a method that does the stuff for option number one. I think that's a great way of doing it personally. So that would be five more methods that you add to this list. When it comes to stuff like this, especially, I think there's a lot of wiggle room there, so I'm not looking for one thing in particular. This is something where I really want you to think about how you prefer to approach this, come up with something that works well for you. Uh, whether it's one method, two methods, seven methods, I think all of those options have potential. Um, let me just, let's just do one last trip through the uh, requirements here, make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, the user asks to create a new user. You ask for the fields. What are we going to need to to request information from our user? What's that called? The scanner. The scanner. The scanner. Is that a variable of our class? Could it be? I might just be making things more complicated than they need to be, but that's my job. I'm a teacher. Um, you could include a scanner here on your list of passes if you wanted to. If you use a lot of methods to handle menu stuff, then I think that that might actually lead you more towards the idea of having a scanner as your one of your class variables. If you do things in one or two methods, then I feel like having a scanner as one of your class variables is probably not as necessary. It's more of a uh, personal decision in that regard. But you, you're definitely going to need one because we're asking for user input. Um, we already talked about user a list of users in the array. Once they finish, go back to the main menu. OK. They ask to become an existing user. We print a list of names and then we ask them which one they want to become. I feel like we have everything we need to make that happen. They ask to create a post. They type in the post and then you saved it in the post array. Perfect. Uh, if they ask to print all posts, yeah. It asks to find the last post and print that. Oh, what does it say that? If the user asks to print all posts. The one above it. Oh, the one above it? Um, oh, find the last post made by that user and print it to the screen. OK, let's think about that for a second. Thank you for pointing that out. 
So they want to create a post. We want to show them the last post that they entered. What are we going to What are we going to need to use to figure that out? What information do we have available to help us figure that out? Well, here we go. Right. We have that number. So we're going to have to go through all of the posts for a user and find the one with the largest number. Right? How do I access that number? I'm sorry? We can do a getter. Get post number. Something like that. And you may need to create getters for these other ones as well as you go through. I oftentimes don't include all of the getters and setters on this list, like I said. Um, I just wait until I, I determine that I need them. Um, uh, let's see. OK. I think we covered it all, or we at least covered the vast majority of it. I'm definitely going to post these on Slack. I want you to use these. Um, I want you to take these designs that we talked about now and turn them into functional code. There's still a lot of work to be done, right? There is still a lot of work to be done. But hopefully this will save you some struggle, because coming up with a design, knowing where to start is a really hard part of any program. and um, now that you have this design, you can start turning these things into variables and turning these things into methods and making those pieces interact with one another. Um, does anybody have any final questions about this assignment or anything we've talked about today? Yes? Would it matter what, uh, which class the main method is in? Does it matter which class the main method is in? That's a great question. Um, no, technically no, does not matter. You actually can have multiple main methods. You can have one main method per class if you want to. And I actually like doing that sometimes because what that allows me to do is to create a main method in my post class that I use to test posts to see if they work the way that I want them to. And then I can create another main method in my user class that I use to test the users just to make sure that everything's working the way that I want it to. And then I can create another main menu class, or uh, I'm sorry, another main uh, method in my menu class to test the menu and make sure that everything works the way I expect it to. So um, you don't have to do that, of course, but you certainly can. And um, that's another thing that I would really suggest. There's a lot here. This is the largest thing that we've asked you to come up with. It's not even close. This is a, this is a large program compared to the other stuff that you've done. Please, 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 please write a little bit of code, test it. Write a little bit of code, test it. If you try to go through all three of these things and then test it at the very end, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's broken and it's gonna be very hard for you to figure out where it went wrong. But if you write a little bit of stuff and then test it, you know that the change has to be in that stuff that you just wrote. So test your thing, test your code very often. Um, any other questions? Break it into chunks, you know? Start with one of these guys. Start with the post class, or start with the user class. And don't even worry about the other two. Forget that they even exist. They're not even a thing that you need to worry about. Just start with one of them, and start checking off the pieces, testing them out, making sure that they work. If you try to take it on all at once, it's gonna feel like a lot. It's gonna become overwhelming. Uh, so you have the rest of the time today. You have an hour today. You also have next week for class as well. Next week, what I plan to do, just to um, give you a heads up, for the first part of class, uh, we can talk about this assignment again. I'm hoping you'll bring questions. I'm hoping you'll work on this today. I'm hoping you'll work on this uh, over the next week and then bring questions in um, next week to class so that we can uh, try to work on things together, fix some problems, because I imagine that a lot of people are going to run into similar problems. So we'll talk about those as a group in class next week. And then hopefully, um, by the end of next week, by the end of next week's class, we'll get everybody finished up on this assignment so that we can move on to the next uh, set of stuff. 
All right. Unless there's any questions, we'll be around to take attendance and help you out. Uh, let me post these on Slack too so that you can use them. <laughs>